What up everybody, it's your boy Nautical back at it with another video. Microsoft just finished their E3 press conference. Let's talk about the Xbox One X and everything that we know about it to this point. All right, let's talk about the name, Xbox One X. How do I feel about it? I really don't know yet. It really comes down to really my job because I sell these things for a living. I am a manager at GameStop, if people didn't know that. And I just imagine people coming in the store saying, hey, I wanna get that new Xbox One S or X, or which one did you say? X or S? I, I just think the play on words is just kind of weird for consumers and stuff. You're almost gonna have to break it down and say, okay, do you want the X or do you want the S? Well, what's the difference between the X and the S? I just, I just think they wish they would've had it completely separate it with a little bit more verbiage so you can not just mix up the systems all together. Overall, I think it's not a bad name for the system. I prefer Xbox One Scorpio, just because that's something that everybody already knew. It was really a good way to deriferate itself from the Xbox One S. That's probably what I would've went with, but I don't think the name itself is a bad idea at all. So next we need to talk about this is a mid-gen upgrade. This isn't a new system. This isn't a new generation. This is still part of the eighth generation of consoles. It's still an Xbox One at heart. It's basically an Xbox One S supercharged with a lot more horsepower under the hood. It even looks like the Xbox One S. It does support 4K Ultra Blu-ray player just like the original Xbox One S did. It does have HDR support for expanded range and brightness, a wider color gamut, and it reproduces colors closer to the ones you see in real life in the world. Now, one thing the Xbox One S doesn't share with the Xbox One X is the fact that the Xbox One S can do upscaling to 4K. So if you had a 1080p picture, it's gonna automatically upscale that picture to look better on a 1080p display. You're gonna get a lot sharper images, you're gonna get all the bells and whistles, not like a full-fledged 4K TV will give you, but you will get improved visuals on a 1080p display that's gonna give you simulated upscaling to 4K. And that's something that the actual PlayStation 4 Pro does too compared to the PlayStation 4 Slim. So we're basically getting the same mixed bags right there, but it's just the fact that the Pro doesn't do it as well as the actual Xbox One Scorpio does because it, get, it has a little bit more horsepower under the hood, but honestly, it's negligible when it comes to playing at 1080p and upsampling that to 4K because you're not really, you're not really changing a lot more. You're gonna see the biggest difference when you hook this up to a 4K TV and that's where it's gonna shine on both consoles. So how does Xbox One X do this? Well, Microsoft up clocked all of the processors in all of the Xboxes and basically handpicked the ones that were gonna fit into the Xbox One and basically graded that as the fastest processor ever put into a console to date. That we knew about this going all the way back to March, so that's nothing new but we didn't expect it to have liquid cooling. So this is the first system that's gonna have liquid cooling in it for any console to date. And besides, a proce besides the processor, it has over 7 billion transistors, 12 gigs of DDR RAM. The GPU was clocked at 1.172 gigahertz and with six teraflops of absolute power coursing through its veins. Basically to put that to reference, Nvidia's top of the line GPU, the 1080 Ti has 11.3 teraflops. The closest competitor on the console side, PlayStation has 4.12. Nothing to sneeze at there either, but it's literally two more than the actual Pro, five and a half almost more less than the actual highest end PC car, which is $800. Now, really just comes down to do you value just the extra horsepower you can get? I don't know if it's gonna change life in any of the games and stuff. You will get better looking games because of the extra power it's putting out, but I don't know if it's gonna give you that 60 frames per second performance that you definitely want when it came to Microsoft saying it's gonna be true 4K, 60 frames uncompromised. I don't know if you're gonna get that because they already came out and said that open world games, don't expect those to be at 60 frames per second. Those are gonna probably be 30. But 
Here's hoping that this is a step in the right direction. It is only a midget upgrade, and I'm definitely looking forward to the things that they put out for it. Now, the most important part of any game system is the games you play on it. And everybody should already know this, but it's already been confirmed, and they pretty much just alluded to it today that everything you bought for your Xbox One S or Xbox One original will work on the Xbox One X. So the games, the accessories, the controllers, the headsets, all that stuff will work. Anything you do on that system will work on the new system. Also, anybody that you play with on Xbox One S, you'll still be able to play with those same people on Xbox One X. So like I said, this is only a mid-gen upgrade. This isn't a new platform completely. Your friends are still gonna be your same friends. If you're on the fence about jumping over to the system just because I don't know if my friends are gonna do it, so I don't know if I wanna jump up because I'll be playing by myself, that's not the case. You're gonna be still playing with the same people even if they get the X or not. So don't let that be one of your buy decisions let the game speak for themselves and one thing I will say is they did bring a lot of games now I'm I'm gonna put up a separate video about the games that they showed and what I liked and what I didn't like but you can't deny the fact that they showed a lot of games and they got real diverse with the actual lineup of games that they actually brought out on stage this year and I'm super impressed with that I'm not saying that all those games are for me and probably most of them wasn't for me and a lot of and I really didn't see a game this year or a game Game that's coming out this year that I definitely say I got to have the system for but nevertheless they showed a bunch of games and that's the number one thing you want for a platform going forward so one thing that was oddly missing from the conference was VR capabilities not saying that that's something they should have talked about here I'm just shocked that they didn't bring it up at all because VR is like such a craze right now and I was just wondering if Microsoft would actually put their hat in that ring because they do have a system that is very capable of doing it but I don't know if they're trying to take a wait and see approach to see how it pans out on other platforms before they do it we'll probably hear something about that later on in the year or next year or wherever it might be something that's really big at E3 next year but not saying that I miss it or anything I'm just shocked it wasn't there at all another thing that they actually talked about and this probably got the biggest standing ovation in the room which is weird because it was just a feature but they're actually bringing backwards compatibility back for the original xbox one lineup now they didn't say any particular amount of games they did talk about one game in particular that was called crimson skies which was a really really good game i really like the fact that they're doubling down on bringing their old catalog up i just want them to bring out even more new games that's the number one thing that i'm worried about because i probably aren't going to go back and play any of those older games but but I know for people that have nostalgia for stuff like that, this is gonna be a great feature for you and nothing to knock that. I just think they should be concentrating more on the new stuff that they're bringing, but you can never knock a feature because the feature is something you definitely wanna have and it's always good to have something that nobody else can give you. So let's talk about the price, $4.99. I actually had a conversation with a friend. I did tell him that if they wait to the very end of the press conference to tell people the price, it's gonna be $3.99. The reason for that being is I thought that Microsoft wouldn't come out and want to ruin the whole first part of their E3 press conference by coming out and saying $4.99 at the very end of it. Now, I don't think it is as bad as I thought it would be. There were still probably a lot of people that didn't like the price. And I also think that people, they've been told pretty much from third sources and just rumors all together that this system was going to be $3.99. And when $4.99 comes out their mouth, I think a lot of people's jaw hit the ground I don't think $4.99 is a bad price. I do think that it's a competitive price for the system that they already made, but when you put that in line with the PS4 Pro, probably getting a price drop this holiday, we don't know, because Sony's gonna do something. Right now, it's a $100 difference between those systems. It could be $150. Plus, they're gonna probably bundle games with that system this holiday too. So that's always something to look forward to. But overall, I don't think it's anything really wrong with it. I just think Microsoft should have wanted to be a little bit more aggressive with the price itself. They did say this was gonna be a premium console and they were kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place when it came to talking about that. Do you wanna release the system at 399 and risk the fact that people thinking like, oh, it's probably not as good as they say it is because they only charge $400 for it or do you wanna price yourself out the market being four or $500 or $600? Uh, I think they just met somewhere in the middle. I think that 
this is going to be something that we got to definitely keep our eyes to see how many systems actually move because of this price point but i don't think it's a terrible price point i just think i wish it was 3.99 and not 4.99 so in conclusion will i buy this system yes reason being i'm an xbox fan at heart I love playing games on Xbox with my friends, the community, the people I met throughout the 13, 14 years I've been playing on Xbox Live. It's been amazing. I do have a PC that's really good, like way better than any of these consoles can ever achieve to be. I can run 4K max settings on everything pretty much. And that's not really the deciding factor for me. I was watching somebody's video, um, Broken Games HD put out a video earlier today talking about why Star Wars Battlefront 2 will probably be a PS4 purchase and not a PC purchase. And it was really, really hit close to home because he talked about, yes, it looks so much better on the PC, but when you don't have people to consistently play it with, the whole vibe of the game just goes away when all your friends are playing on a different platform. That's where I'm sitting at with the differences between the PC and the Xbox One. It would be nice to have all my friends jump over and play on PC, but that's a unrealistic expectation because consoles are just easy they're plug up you play them you put the game in and everything works pc has so many nuances that you have to deal with and it's come a long way it's a lot better now but that's the number one reason why i am going to buy this console and i am i love technology i love buying new things and this is just the next new thing for me to buy so make sure you leave a comment down below let me know if you're going to pick up the xbox one x let me know if you're going to be a day one supporter or you're going to wait till a price drop also make sure you hit that like button and hit that subscribe button if you haven't turn on email notifications because it's going to let you know when the next video goes live i am nautical i appreciate you stopping by and watching this video and i will see you guys in the next video peace